And here we have the Albert Hour 12. This is a space side single malt Scotch whiskey. They proudly use local barley, and the 12 is finished with American oak as well as sherry butt. They use a sum of four pot stills in a double distillation process to produce their new make spirit. And with the pear shape, the pot and that conical neck have the classic design. And then there's no constriction or reflex bowls in the neck and the light arm goes straight out. So you would expect a very strong and intense distillery character. But this leads us to how fast Aberlour distills its spirits. They do it very slowly and the sweet and calm character that this whiskey has suggests that they use a very slow distillation process. Curiously, they pour a bottle of this into the Spey River every year to mark the beginning of uh, salmon season in February. Uh, this one specifically, the first time I had this one, it kind of blew me away. It's for the soft Speyside style, almost like a Lowland style. This thing is beautiful. A beautiful amber color, medium intensity, more amber than gold. Has a gorgeous um, apple, pear orchard, fruit cake, sherry, it's a little toffee, ginger, warm. Oh, it's your grandmother's kitchen at Christmas time. Has a richness, but a very smoothness. Mm. It's a little better on the nose than it is on the palate. The nose is remarkable. I can still, that fruitcake character is quite remarkable. It's a little candied fruit that lingers. It's almost a little bit of chocolate and toffee. Can definitely taste a little bit of the, um, both the sherry butt and the bourbon cask. There's a little bit of coconut. But then there's a little bit of sweet wood too, almost a little bit of vanilla. Quite nice. The middle middle of the taste is a little bit rougher than the beginning and the end. Um, we'll see if water tones that down. Ginger fruit cake, a little apple pie. It's a very light, clean smoke character. A little bit of dryness, dry smoke. Cinnamon for sure. A lot of orange comes out in addition to the apple with dilution. It'll be softened. Um, that roughness in the middle has definitely faded away, although it some of the character is a little bit um, lacking now. But a long, beautiful finish. I'm still sitting here with those nice flavors, that fruitcake character and ginger. There's no sign of very much phenolic. There's smoke, but there's not a peat character here at all. This would change people's perception of single malt scotch very handily. It's very well done. The only thing it's missing is just a little bit of roughness there early. I think that you have to give, you would have to give this a 9.4 for a rating from an objective standpoint of how well this is put together. My personal, I think I'm also there at a 9.4, maybe a little nudge up to 9.5. It's surprising. It's fun. It's, it's, you could sit down with this bottle and, and one friend only, <laughs> and this bottle would be gone, uh, especially evening after dinner. It was very well done. Uh, yeah, so 9.5 for me. And then we have the Tom Dew, which is a 12-year-old Speyside single malt scotch as well. Tom Dew is pretty unique in that they have their own malting equipment. This is done almost all in sherry cask and then squat stills, but then again, a slow distillation. They used to sell all of this beautiful juice to JB and Cuddy Sark before their own bottlings took off. Now here's their salad and box for malting barley. It's like 50 meters long and then has a set of screws attached to a crossbar and the crossbar moves across the length of the container while the screws raise the barley from the bottom to the top. They have a kind of mechanical airflow that blows across the barley for cooling it and then um, turned over about two or three times a day. Now the distillery also has their own spring, the Tom Dew spring, and they have very big pot stills as well with a broad shape. 
but they use sherry cask for maturation and do a pretty slow distillation as well. So it's very gentle. It does have a little slightly oily character. as comes to you at about $70 and bottled up at 40% ABV. All right, now our Tom Dew 12 year old Space Side single malt. Definitely in that amber tone, a little bit of gold, a little over medium. You're hit immediately with caramel, apple, vanilla, a little sweet almond, and a sweetness, sweet apple, dried fruit, a little bit of that fruit cake. Sultana, raisin, citrus, the faintest wisp of smoke. There is a oily, rich texture to this whiskey. Very smooth mouth coating. The warmth you would expect, but the warmth is mellow. Again, with the caramel, with the apple, with the vanilla, with the almonds. A little bit of uh, fruitcake again, raisins, hint of chocolate on the end, it's just faint wisp of smoke. I mean, possibly some phenolics, but they're very well buried and they're almost like a background to what's happening here. It just finishes forever. It's, it's still, this, this is a rock star. That's personal preference there. Oh my goodness. I tried this with a little bit of water. It almost seems like a sin though. A little more citrus with dilution. A little bit more smoke. But still the apple, vanilla, caramel. A lot more orange with dilution. Still some apple, still some caramel. This is remarkable how long it finishes. It just finishes forever, and there are no rough edges to this whiskey at all. It's very polished, remarkably constructed. I mean, it is slightly better without the water. It doesn't need to be cooled or mellowed with water, but you can, if you do end up putting a piece of ice in here, you're not going to be worried that it's going to destroy it. Putting a rating on this is tricky because I cannot see that there is anything wrong with this whiskey. There's no missing piece to this whiskey. Everything is here. Everything is put together that you would expect from a space side single malt. I think I've got to go to a 9.8 for a um, objective rating. And I think personally, my personal rating is, is at least that high. I think it's, it's almost a perfect 10. It's just a 9.9. I'm just leaving a, a, a point in case I find something that rocks my world more. But that's a, that's a remarkable whiskey. All right, we also have the Mortlock 16-year-old, the good old beast of Dufton. This distillery has traditional style larch wood warm tubs, which is very rare to find in a modern day distillery. Actually, only a few distilleries across Scotland still use them. I think this is actually Talisker's. Um, and this, actually, again, this is how they work. It comes off the still, goes into you have water that feeds that big tub and then that coil spins around and around and around gently cooling it but you don't get as much copper contact as you do with a shell and tube dispenser so you get a little meatier spirit and hence the uh the beastie character they have one of the most idiosyncratic still rooms in the industry now mortlock is almost the mad scientist of the distillery world as well they have all these six different pot stills, and they all have a different shape and size. They're all different variations of the traditional space side shape. So what they do is a blend of various double and triple distillations, resulting in a finished product that is a 2.81 times distilled whiskey, so to speak. The big wash still and the big spirit still work together, resulting in a classic double distilled spirit. And then the second and the third also act as wash stills and an intermediate still. The second and the third will also produce an intermediate spirit. Then it's transferred to the Wee Witchy, which is a special spirit still on which a small witch 
is engraved. And then they are finished in sherry casks. Now, this is known as the Beast of Dufton. Uh, that double distilled part and that worm tub gives a little bit of meaty character to this guy. A little bit more mahogany, a little bit more orange, and the medium intensity. Definitely more subtle. The intensity is a little bit lower. You've got to go a little deeper for a beast. But once you get your nose in there, this little orange peel, little roasted nuts, almost like a hazelnut, and lots of fruit. Again, like pie, quince. Ginger snap. It's not a roughness from any American oak like a coconut. I believe this would be almost all sherry cast showing. Well, it is, I guess. Sweet wood. A little bit thin on the on the palate. Definitely a subtle side. There's a little bit of oily, almost like walnut, cooked raisins, ginger. Shows, tends to grow. It builds over time. There's more flavor that's happening multiple seconds later. It's got a little dryness, a little bit of tannin. It's a pretty good uh, richness, but it's subtle. Surprisingly subtle, but I guess it's also been 16 years old. Quite a range of flavors, um, but reserved. Uh, surprisingly reserved. It's definitely, I would not consider this a beast in... Um, I mean, that lingery, oily character is not what you might expect from a space side. That's nice. There's a lot going on. If anything, it's just a tad underwhelming. But still well put together. Let's see what water does to it. A kind of tan in character comes out more with water. But again, it's not a coconut, like an American oak tan in character. It's a very clean tannin. A little bit of white smoke. The apple... A little bit of dark fruit, too, like a dark cherry and ginger, too. Being quite subtle without water, water makes it even more subtle. Orange, candied orange, and that little bit of that roasted nut character. A little bit of apple. Tannin is a little bit lighter with water. Quite a long finish and quite pleasant. It's the kind of whiskey that you could sit down and you would... You would be impressed with the first two, first two drums, and then you would probably be playing cards and not know what is it, and you'd be finished with the bottle. But it's well done. Uh, as far as a rating, I would give it for its the way it is put together. Quite a bit going on. Close to nine, a nine, right at nine point zero, eight point nine. My personal rating would probably be a little bit lower. I was expecting a little bit more. It shows a lot early, but then it fades off pretty quickly. So for me, it'd be just a slight, slight lower rating down in the 8.8 uh, 8 .8 kind of rating there. All right. And then we have our Campbelltown single malt scotch spring bank. Now they do everything from malting to even bottling done on site. And they do kilning with and without peat here. Um, this one has seen about six hours of smoke on the peat. They have one wash still and two spirit stills. And then the two spirit stills each have a pretty large capacity. And they make three different single malts on site. But they all have different flavors. They're all distilled in different ways. Like Springbank is distilled actually two and a half times. Long Row, another product they have, is only distilled twice. And then Hazelburn is distilled three times. All of the pot stills at Springbank have that traditional space side shape with wide lids and tall conical necks. Now, the 10-year-old here is matured in a bourbon and sherry cask combination and it's bottled at 46% ABV and then about $90 to $100 if you can find it. It's a very hard one to find. It has a very um, strong cult following as well. Oh, and specifically, it's 60% bourbon and 40% sherry on the finish. It's already leaping from the glass. It's a lighter amber, usually between maybe a little more gold, gold to amber, light intensity. 
Oh, the sweet peat smoke. It's just a faint brine. Yeah, the peat is very soft and round. There's some orchard fruit, orange, oranges. There's a little bit of apple. It's like a sweet lavender or heather and honey. It's a little malt character. Lovely spice. Briny spice. If there is such a thing. Has a delightful mouth warming and mouth filling body to it or texture. It's like slightly chewy. It's a lot happening when it hits your palate. There's a little heat, a little alcohol heat, but it's balanced with the spice, a little bit of nutmeg. Again, the orange, the heather, the honey, the peat. The peat is such a delightful, soft peat character. The sweetness with the peat and the salt, it has all the pieces that you would imagine a a well-crafted dish to eat would have. It has all the different components to make it a very balanced and a lot of character without being showy. It's still a little bit on the subtle side. That peat is lingering, but there's a little bit of vanilla and caramel as well as the orange and the spice. The brininess is very faint now in the finish, but it finishes for a week. A little bit on the end, a little bit of the um, the coconut from the American oak comes through right at the end there. Let's see what water does to it. More oak notes with uh, with water. The orange, the spice, a little bit of briny character, but it's on the, it's uh, it's retreated into the background. The peat is still there, but not as rich. A lot more orange with dilution. The caramel comes a little sooner with dilution into the finish. And the wood sneaks up. You get both types of wood now with dilution. The sherry is a backbone. The bourbon is a little bit more in your face. Probably one of the most beautiful peat characters anywhere. It's for the people who say they don't like peat, but they do like single malt. This will, this will change their mind and change their world. Toffee. Again, the caramel is still lingering. It's that spice. And the oranges. Now, right at the end, I'm getting some of that, the heather. Through all of it, there was just a little bit of malt character, just a, just a, a faint malt note. This is beautifully done. It's a little bit humbling. This is one of those whiskeys where it's humbling for me to try to put a rating on it. Um, because... It's the proficiency of the distillers and the, the character beyond. There's too many, there's too many parts happening here too. There's, there's the, there's the malt quality. There's the sea breeze. There's the, there's that peat note. There's all the pieces in just a 10 year old that are so well put together. Um, I mean, I believe there is still headroom in quality. For, for you to keep going and taste more of their offerings. And that's the only thing that keeps it from having a perfect rating. I mean, it's a nine, I think structure wise, if I had to put, it's a 9.8. The only, the only way it can be better is with more time, I think more age, but it has all the pieces together. Just a little bit, a little bit of time for them to come together um, and synthesize possibly. But personally, my personal rating, it's, it's close to a 10. It's that little bit of roughness gives it charm, gives it character, gives it, you know, masculine to the feminine, if you want to call it. It has, I don't know what for me personally, I don't care that it could get better with age. It has everything that I need right now. And so it's maybe there's one that's better. So I have to give it a 9.9, .9, but I believe it, there's a magic in this bottle for me personally, which brings it close to a 10, but a 9.9. .9. I, 
I think in heaven they would put the Tom Dew 12 and the Spring Bank 10 side by side. And um, on odd days, you'd have one and even days, you'd have the other. But beautifully done. Still, still lingering flavors. Um, remarkable. Good job. Now, for those of you who are testing for the certification, you will have either a blind sample in your kit or you will be poured a blind sample in class. In addition to the theory questions, you will have questions specifically on the sample as part of the certification. When you're ready, open it up and answer the questions. You're going to be asked about the aromas and flavors and possible age, also the type, whether it's most likely a single malt, blended grain, blended malt, also the region where that style may dominate, and then for extra credit, you can try to guess the producer from a list provided. So best of luck and enjoy.